Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you, MIT, and uh, thank you, uh, Rafael, for inviting me to be here. It's a huge honor. Um, because I know that this audience is mostly Chinese. 因为我觉得这个是一个很好的机会让大家来练练英文。另外,我的英文里是带着这个东北口音,所以比较好理解。So, uh, the title of my talk is In the Mood for AI. AI, the pronunciation of this word in Chinese is I, which means love. So, basically, I borrowed this name from a very beautiful Hong Kong movie, In the Mood for Love. And uh, I know many of you have not really seen this movie. So for the next uh, two hours, I invite you to watch the movie, uh, the whole movie. Uh, if you see the two lines uh, down there, it's uh, we are analyzing every frame of the movie to detect you know, the mood of the movie in a particular scene. Uh, we're doing face detection, face recognition, post tracking. You know, we're analyzing you know, the relationship and what they are doing uh, you know, with each other in this movie. <clears throat> so basically, uh, what is the purpose? Are we teaching the machine to watch movie for us? Uh, certainly for bad movies, that would be useful. But uh, mostly, we would like to watch the movie by ourselves. So, the real application is not really to teach the machine to watch a movie. Uh, well, actually, we don't really have the time for the whole movie, so let me skip this. <coughs> uh, so what is the application? So one of the application is advertising. So we want to you know, find out the right place, the right mood to insert advertising. You know, this is a sense time <laughs> AR platform. <coughs> You know, since time has been existing for like uh, 90 to 100 years already, you see from the movie, that's uh, our autonomous driving car. And uh, <clears throat> of course, <clears throat> uh, the real advertisement I want to plug in is this. Uh, this is my son. <clears throat> <laughs> because I understand that there are many uh, professors from uh, MIT is here today. Uh, I just want you to remember my son, this face, one more time. Uh, uh, someday he's going to apply to college. And uh, I need the uh, reference letters. <clears throat> Actually, the, last week he called home. He said, Mom and Dad, uh, I have a great news. I got a B plus in math. And we said, oh, OK. And he said, Mom, B plus is a great, sub a great grade for any subject. And we said, OK, fine. Then a few days later, he got a C in French. Uh, so <clears throat> I think just take whatever you can, you can do. Just don't push for it. Uh, so anyway, so that's why I need a letter. <clears throat> and uh, uh, no pressure. It's, but I know he's not going to make it to MIT. And the letter is really for application to Harvard. <clears throat> Uh, so, let's come back to the subject of AI. <laughs> really sorry. Um, well, congratulations to Boston Red Sox. You know. <clears throat> so, a week, more than a week ago, they became the championship uh, champion again. And uh, I think they win the first championship in uh, 1998. Then it takes them 86 years to win another one. So it's really the dedication, the hard work, you know, the perseverance. All this really, you know, helped them to go through all those years. It's kind of like AI, you know, from, for 50 years it never worked. Then suddenly it started to work. And uh, so since then they have been winning, I don't know, is it five uh, championships? So it's really hard work. And I'm a big fan of uh, Red Sox and uh, all the other big sports teams in Boston. Um, 
Uh, I was uh, at MIT from 91 to 97, so I watched a lot of their, their games. And at that time, they really were miserable. And uh, <laughs> from 91 to 97, uh, they got totally zero championship altogether. And uh, then uh, from 98 to 2018, you know, it's uh, 11 altogether. So this, through this big data AI analysis, I have to draw the conclusion. It is really not the hard work, you know, the dedication. It's maybe just me. You know, maybe I should have left uh, MIT sooner. <clears throat> but actually, AI does have something to do with sports. We actually use AI to do an analysis of the activities, you know, tracking the you know, actions of the sports. The, the athletics. So, sports is one area that uh, one industry we are working on using AI. <clears throat> and uh, another area we work on is AR. Uh, this is the first uh, mobile phone application that actually using AR in a real game. You know, you, 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 when you're taking a when you are taking a real video scene, and uh, you can actually interact with uh, uh, game characters in real time on a mobile phone. And this is, uh, I think, the king of glory, the most uh, popular game in the world. So we work with uh, Oppo and uh, uh, Tencent uh, to produce this uh, realistic uh, you know, game playing uh, applications. So uh, as I'm showing you a few applications, actually we are working on actually a lot more than this. Uh, we are also working on autonomous driving, medical imaging, uh, and uh, quite a number of other industries. And uh, even you know, AI is really related to uh, quantum uh, mechanics, quantum computing, <clears throat> as I, we heard before. <clears throat> so since time, really, has been working in not just not AI. AI is really not an independent industry. So AI plus is. So that's really our work. We're working with many, many uh, industries to help to improve the efficiency of those industries. So that's our work. And uh, we are very fortunate to become the fifth uh, national open innovation platform for artificial intelligence and uh, computer vision, <coughs> uh, intelligent vision, uh, right after uh, Baidu, Tencent, Alibaba, and Apple Tech. So it's a huge honor that today, out of the five national platforms, we have three uh, right here. Uh, <coughs> so <coughs> one area I want to uh, particular stress is education. Actually, for any industry, the talent training is the most important thing. <clears throat> so we actually published the first textbook for high school, along with a, a lab, uh, together with our partner. <clears throat> we hope not just attract the interest of students to AI, but also to all STEM subject. And we hope you know, in the future we can work with MIT on this. And finally, we are very, very fortunate to be able to work with MIT to form this uh, AI alliance to work together on AI. I want to thank MIT for coming to China and for coming to China at this particular time. Uh, actually, uh, I think uh, a couple of months ago when I met uh, Professor uh, Riff, uh, he told me that uh, they're coming to China for the MIT summit. And uh, many people asked him, him, are you crazy at this time? And he told me, exactly, this is the time to go to China. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, 
So I believe AI is really, uh, the purpose of AI is really helping us to break boundaries. So before we have shown that AI is helping to break boundaries among different scientific subjects. And secondly, it can also helping to break the boundary between AI and the traditional industries. And finally, most importantly, is helping us to break the boundary between countries. So I think MIT, along with many other top universities in the US, has made America a great country. And I hope in the future we can work with MIT to make humanity great again. Thank you.